Thanks for being here this morning. I'm imagining that a lot of people at some point, when you just sat down, started Googling what is blockchain. I'm, I'm pretty sure there were a few of them. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a primer first before we, we get started so that you have an understanding of, of what exactly it is that we're talking about. So essentially, blockchain is now being referred to as the internet of value, whereas there is the internet of things. Um, this is the internet of, of value. Um, the most basic way to describe what blockchain is is that it's the protocol that essentially runs Bitcoin. So blockchain is like, essentially if you were to give a PDF to someone, you were to email them a PDF, there would be a copy still. You would have a copy of that PDF. That doesn't work when you want to transfer money. It doesn't work when you want to uh, transfer uh, something of value, like data, for instance, because you still have the copy. Well, um, blockchain is essentially a, only a distributed ledger where everyone writes to the blockchain. And it has a few different tools that it uses. One is smart contracts, and the other is cryptographic keys, which um, my panelists here will discuss exactly what those are. Uh, but essentially, it's allowing for the disintermediation of trust. And you're all in the ad tech industry, so you certainly understand that this is an industry with players that do not trust each other. And because of that, the cost of trust is, is really enormous. Um, so essentially, right now, blockchain is really gaining a lot of traction um, in different industries, healthcare, finance, um, even real estate, uh, because essentially you can disintermediate and remove a lot of the middlemen that eat into the margins on both sides of a supply chain. Um, even the U.S. Department of Defense is investing right now in startups that are using blockchain technology to help to essentially make um, data more secure to prevent from, from hacking. So this is a really big deal. I know that IBM also um, uh, says that 15% of the top global banks in um, 2017 will be rolling out their um, blockchain-enabled commercial products. So um, ad tech is not quite there yet. However, um, my company, I'm a co-founder of Madhive, is, is making really great strides right now in um, the blockchain industry and applying the use case of this protocol to essentially securing data and allowing for data portability and essentially lowering the cost of trust. So um, I've got some really great panelists here today that can, um, from different facets, you know, we've got the publishing side, um, we've got someone from Nielsen, uh, we've also got um, someone from IBM, and then also my co-founder, Adam, from, from Madhive. So guys, if you could just quickly introduce yourselves, um, that would be a great way, to, great way to start. Jim? Hey, good morning. I'm Jim Wilson. Um, I'm with uh, Tegna, um, and Tegna, as many of you may know, is the spin out from Gannett uh, last year, the broadcast stations and the digital business from Gannett, and uh, I'm the president of a new division called Premium focused on OTT. Good morning, I'm Peter Guglielmino from IBM. I'm the CTO for their media and entertainment industry, and I work across all the branches of IBM, uh, including IBM Research, and one of the areas we've been focusing on is blockchain. And we've been working pretty closely with our cryptographic group down in Almaden uh, around um, confidentiality with respect to smart contracts. Hi, I'm Adam Helfgott, the uh, CEO, co-founder of Madhive. Um, we are, are uh, a, a data management company that, that's providing tools and, um, and, and, uh, and software for, to, to, to secure data across uh, OTT video. And, um, and uh, we feel that blockchains are, are the transformative power for ad tech in the future. Hi, morning, Vic Sharma. I lead uh, new business and new integrations for the Nielsen Marketing Cloud. Spend a lot of time in the programmatic space, hearing a lot about uh, verification, transparency. Uh, really excited and fascinated to be on a panel about blockchain as it applies to advertising. Thanks. Um, so we'll start connecting the dots in terms of like, you know, this panel is specifically about programmatic and how blockchain could essentially um, ease the adoption and the efficiency in the supply chain when looking at programmatic buying um, and selling of media. So, Jim, obviously um, there's a huge opportunity right now as 
linear broadcast specifically moves into digital. And there are tremendous opportunities for um, you know, blockchain in terms of the overall scalability of programmatic, um, addressable audience buying. Um, since you represent upwards of like 80 different publishers, where do you see some of the biggest challenges and therefore opportunities in, in the programmatic uh, scaling? So to understand what we do um, at Premium, just so you have an understanding, I mean, some of you are probably Googling Tegna, first of all. I'm like, what's Tegna? Um, and Premium. Um, so Tegna, you know, Tegna owns uh, 38, uh, 47 stations in 38 markets, right? We've been in the linear broadcast business. We've also been in the, in the digital business uh, in our markets. We own companies like Cars.com and Career Builder. Um, and we recognize an opportunity uh, with sort of shifting eyeballs and audiences uh, to look at the over-the-top space and to really leverage our business across the country, our footprint, our relationships, um, and uh, to build out uh, an over-the-top ad services business. And so in doing that, uh, we're working with, as Stacy said, up to about, up, upwards to about 80 publishers. And, and essentially what that means is that uh, we're aggregating um, advertising impressions across all of these publishers and basically taking them to market in a one-stop shop format for regional and local advertisers. And frankly, the response from the regional and local advertisers has been pretty tremendous, right? Because the OTT space is, is pretty complicated, right? There are aggregators, there are networks, um, there are devices, and really, for the most part, you know, whether you know, I'm in a big agency meeting or a small local advertising meeting, uh, everyone's trying to make sense of what this is all about. So, um, and so we're bringing that value, and we're bringing that, we're building out that um, ad services platform. Um, in doing that, um, we're, we're finding, you know, as we talk to all of our publishing partners, we're all trying to solve the same things, right? And there's a, there are um, issues around the market, around standards, uh, and, you know, around data collection, around transparency, um, and everyone's using different solutions. Um, and so, you know, for us, you know, First and foremost, we're, we're looking at how do we create consistency across these providers mm -hmm. um, so that um, we can find a way to sort of connect all these pipes together in a cost-efficient way. Um, at the same time, our advertisers are asking for transparency. Um, they want to know, ultimately, where are their ad dollars going, who's seeing them, and for us, in particular, um, in, in sort of what networks um, that they're, they're going into as well. So, um, so we're trying to solve all that. Um, and the, um, you know, the, I think the last thing is that, you know, we're essentially trying, again, we're just trying to create these standards. We're trying to create transparency. We're trying to report. Um, and, uh, and I think blockchain creates an opportunity for us around authentication, um, around really understanding, uh, you know, I sort of always say, um, as a joke, you know, how many companies does it take to deliver an ad? Um, and, you know, and as we build out our business, we're looking at, um, you know, how many different, uh, or sort of in that value chain, what do we own, what do we, what do we not own, and how do we create something that's efficient for us, efficient for our publishers, and efficient for our advertisers? And so, ultimately, through you know, technology like blockchain, I think we have an opportunity to um, really create that transparency, but most important, that consistency. Thanks, Jim. That's actually a really good point that you bring up in terms of the overall ad tech layers. And, um, you know, there's something that I'm sure a lot of you have seen out there called the disappearing ad dollar, um, which is essentially showing, like, how many uh, middlemen are eating into to the margins. And, you know, a publisher could end up with only 18 cents of every dollar, uh, every ad dollar, essentially. So <clears throat> not to say that the middlemen do not play some pretty crucial roles, because they certainly do. But what we're finding that's really interesting is that overall, as there, become, as the more, there are more technical capabilities out there, more companies pop up to service um, these companies. So what you end up having is like a lot of double dipping and a lot of inefficiency where you're paying to target or to measure or to find a user that you've already paid to find like 10 times. 
So there's a lot of inefficiency that happens. And the thing that blockchain is really um, most known for in other industries are, are essentially bringing um, efficiency into the supply chain. And more transparency could allow for more liquidity and more inventory and more dollars to essentially flow through that ecosystem. So <clears throat> Adam, why don't you talk to us a little bit about you know, the overall how the ad tech um, system is, is set up in terms of how, like, how can blockchain actually lower the cost of trust? Um, in, a, in, a, in a few ways, um, where, so I've been working with, with Jim for a while at Tegna to try to figure that out from a, a concept point of view. And, and the, uh, you know, the, what's, what's happening is that you know, every time there's a new, well, A, there's, there's a, always a, a new fi a fire going on, and we, instead of trying to solve the problem, we, we try to solve it with a piece of technology that's running off the shelf. And, and generally, when you, we plug that in, you know, we might gain something, um, but we might take another step behind. Um, and you know, whether that's with a, a, a measure, from a, a measurement point of view or, a, uh, or a, from, from a targeting point of view, I might need to target by zip code in, o, in OTT, which is fairly new. Um, and instead of trying to figure out a way to do it in the existing platform, we, we onboard a new vendor, and that might l lower the cost of, uh, like, what my profit now is now, now that I can target by that, it all goes to that vendor now, or a lot of it there. And so we're looking at to use blockchains as a way to just track the user across the, the ad tech stack, and then can we insert in a really simple technology to allow that targeting in this, in the, from, from this point of view without adding in a new layer. Um, you know, that's, that's one way we're looking at it, but it's generally can we, can we have like a single data store that allows the, uh, the, the audience and the, and, the, and the data on a user to be accessed at any one time in a secure manner. And so, we don't, so I'm not stacking up DMPs and, and, on, and SSPs and DSPs over and over and over again to, to do the same thing. Stacy, if I may. Uh, yeah, please. I think, I think, and then again, simply as, as, as just, just from a conceptual point of view, uh, I know everybody knows a lot about blockchain and, and just my journey from the first time I met Adam and heard about this. I think taking a step back, I think clearly we've heard enough people speak about how fintech has had a huge influence on the way programmatic is set up, and for, for very good obvious reasons, right? Uh, some of the themes that resonate for me theoretically from concepts of a blockchain that go into why this could be useful for all of us is, one, the idea of an autonomous recording of a transaction. We could choose to define to what degree that data could be shared. Is it just machine level data? Is it just, or is it actually gonna include audience data which you're willing to share as publishers and advertisers? Um, the second is the identity management, which is, which is really at the heart of this lack of consistency, these layer on top of layers, maybe the fidelity of actual truth sets and signals that define uh, what behaviors we're trying to model on. Uh, and then third part is, of course, what you call uh, double spending, which is, are you paying for the same audiences over and over again? And that has a bad effect, not just in terms of paying or buying audiences, but also you know, to the average user, and we've talked about frequency caps all the while. So, so clearly there's a connection here. And I think uh, what, what we weave towards typically on these conversations is everybody agrees on the idea, sounds utopian, how do we get there? Right. And I think uh, that's the challenge, which is how do you get to a transparency or a scale where everybody can see the benefits of this uh, uh, and get more people to buy in, whether it's publishers, advertisers, or the middlemen, as you call them. Uh, uh, but clearly, uh, I think that's the challenge. How do we move to that next stage, and uh, how does some of the technology that, that I think Adam mentioned play a part in that? So Adam, maybe you can just walk the audience through the, what a smart contract actually is, how cryptographic keys work, what, what happens tactically uh, when you're actually um, writing information to a blockchain, and how is that beneficial? Just sure. go like so at high a, level. At a, at a high level, n no one really, I mean, in the way we're looking at it, just like uh, you, know, you hear of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, no one actually owns that blockchain. It's, a, uh, it's basically su it's a whole bunch of nodes that different organizations might be running. And when they're all connected together, there's a type of, of almost like, like an ether of sorts that no one really owns. And information can be written to that in a secure manner. What that means is, you know, from a, a private key, just like when you visit a website with SSL, it, uh, you know, like only people that can read it are you and that server. Same thing here, except that in the case of blockchains, we can have 
or the way the cryptography generally works is that we can have multiple keys for, for the same piece of data. So you might have a publisher who has a, a measurement partner like Nielsen um, that basically both encrypt a piece of, of data from that got generated on that, on that site. So a thing that we're doing at MadHive is that we have these very simple overlays on top of existing ad creative and that generates first party data. When that first party data gets generated, we'll write that to this ether of sorts with our publisher partner. Um, and then anyone that that publisher wants to have to use that data for a specific moment in time, there's a, a thing called a smart contract, which is just a, a, a piece of code inside of, inside of the blockchain in that block, of, essentially, which, which, which when it gets accessed, it'll run automatically and pull data from regular databases, from different ad tech servers, whatever needs to happen in order to execute that whatever, whatever we wanted to have, have happen. Um, so it moves the, the, the transmission of data into this unowned like ether uh, of sorts where we can, where essentially a company like Nielsen or a DMP like Crux or a company like ours to publishers like Tegna can access this information in a, in a safe, secure way and, and not, if everyone is working from this set of rules, it'll not, um, you know, it, we won't have data leakage of sorts. So we're, we're working on a consortium right now to build out those, those rules. So essentially, like, you know, the smart contract could also, if you're talking about programmatic media, you, the, the smart contract could replace the, the deal ID, where the, the, you know, the deal is actually negotiated, the terms are, are decided upon, the data points, are, the audience segments are chosen, and all of that is written to a smart contract, and essentially the governance of that deal is in code. So we're taking out the entire human element in this particular scenario when you're talking about executing on, on campaigns. Um, so, you know, Peter, I'd just like to hear what you think in terms of like overall walled gardens and, and your thoughts on lowering the cost of trust because IBM obviously is, is taking an enormous bet on blockchain. I mean, you are really bullish on this concept. Yeah, one of the things that we're looking to ensure is to be able to take blockchain technology and really apply it from, from an enterprise perspective. And that involves a couple of things. One is, as everybody's been talking about, removing the friction within a business network, trying to make things run more smoothly and more efficiently, and that's a key thing. In, in many business networks, there's this problem of trust. That's, it's, it's an issue whether we're talking about the music industry, the ad agency, or whatever. And what, what a fundamental keys of the uh, blockchain are is basically two things. One is this notion of immutability, right? So I have a perfect audit trail. So if I have a series of transactions, that get written to that blockchain, I know precisely what actually happened. But going a little bit deeper into that, and the area that we're focusing in on, is this area of smart contracts and confidentiality. In typical blockchain kind of implementations that are in Bitcoin, for instance, everybody sees everything related to the transaction. But in, an, in a business network, that may not always be the case. There certainly may be situations where there are specific deals between two parties within that business network. But I only want those parties to be able to see the details of that transaction. Everybody else can see other aspects, but not those. And that goes to your point about these cryptographic keys, being able to ensure that there's some level of confidentiality, auditability, and a way to manage those transactions smoothly. So we get the advantage of distributed ledger, right? Everybody sees the same thing, but everybody sees only what they're entitled to see. They don't get to see everything. And that's one of the areas that we're focusing in on. Yeah, that's, that's a really cool piece of the cryptographic key is that, let's say you wanted to run a retargeting campaign, for instance, um, you can marry first and, and second and even third party data, essentially tie them up into right. um, a cluster that has keys attached to it. And if you don't have you know, the third party uh, retargeting firm, let's say, if they don't have the keys, they can't exactly. see the data. And exactly. they expire, actually. So you can really bring about this, this overall concept of data portability, which is right now like just not, we're not capable of doing it. Nobody trusts each other enough. Yep. Um, so that's, that's really interesting. So, um, so Jim, overall, let's talk about this whole, um, op the opacity of wall gardens, right? So you, especially having all these different publishers understand the concept of a walled garden, 
and how does that really affect your business? And from a targeting perspective, like how do you really feel like that would change, uh, your business might be able to change, or how could you better serve your advertisers if there were data portability and transparency? I think if I was smarter, I would have flown them all here and had them attend the conference today. <laughs> um, because this is such an important conversation that they're all struggling with, um, we know. So again, back to what we do, right? So we are partnered with big aggregators, big media companies, smaller aggregators, um, and we're really focused on uh, long form premium episodic uh, OTT content, meaning what you typically watch on linear, which now most of us are watching on OTT. Um, and I was up last night watching Orphan Black until 12.30, um, binge watching. But um, you know, these, these publishers are in a really interesting spot, and so are we as a company, Tegna, right? So we are trying to um, sort of protect our data, and I think almost to a point where a lot of our publishing partners are kind of stuck, um, because um, you know, they are, you know, Trust is obviously an important component of it. You've got advertisers that are looking for transparency. You've got companies that are working together but wondering um, how to sort of pass information back and forth in a way where you're only sort of giving out what the data to whatever partner that you are working with. And so, um, and again, you know, all of, as I said earlier, all of, all of us, all of us companies are working with very smart ad tech companies, of which many of you are. Um, and we're all working with different ones of you. And so um, some of us are using one company to solve an issue, and some of us are using others. And so, again, so this transparency, um, advertisers are asking for transparency, right? They're asking us for transparency. They want to know, again, as I said earlier, they want to know where their ad dollars are going. They want to know who we're reaching, and, um, and especially in, in the business of OTT, which is really sort of growing into its own, and Stacey um, mentioned it earlier, uh, or someone on the uh, panel mentioned it earlier, or I think it's Adam, around zip codes. Um, you know, we are sort of advancing our capabilities around data and moving quickly, um, because we believe that um, we really need to, in the OTT space, um, lead that to get to levels of digital. And so, and at the same time, we need to sort of, again, protect data um, work across these different publishers and the various ad tech partners um, to basically pass data and information back and forth so that we can ultimately all sort of grow our businesses together, ultimately all pass that back to the advertiser, and ultimately all make more money. Um, and so, and I'll just go back to um, how many companies does it take to deliver um, an ad because there's so many companies involved in that process. and. Not that they all don't need to be there, um, but I do believe there's a ton of duplication that goes um, across um, you know, um, all of our publishing partners working with different groups, and we're working with different groups. And I think from our, our perspective at Tegna and Premion and working with MadHive, uh, we're looking at how we simplify that process, um, how we um, are able to be much more transparent in the data business to pass this back to our advertisers, to make it seamless, less expensive, and we all make more money. So at least that's what I tell my bosses. <laughs> that's great. So you talked a lot about overall efficiency in supply chain. So Peter, I think that um, you, you actually could speak um, about supply chain in general, especially too, you know, taking it out of the realm of, of the publisher and looking at the advertiser and the agency. And I know IBM is doing some great work with reconciliation, procurement, so maybe you can um, tell the audience about what you're up to there. Yeah, some of the issues that we, you know, clearly everybody's seen this, a huge amount of latency as far as reconciliation. So again, this is, this is a problem because of the technology. Everybody's trying to replicate databases, matching things with spreadsheets and email and phone calls, and you need a way to remove that friction. And one of the ways to do this is with blockchain. Basically put the transactions on the blockchain, everybody sees a replicated immutable copy of that transaction in their respective nodes, it makes it much more easier to do things like reconciliation. If I understand what, besides I have the smart contract, which is essentially think of it like a, a stored procedure in a database. It's actual executable code that enforces the rules of that contract. Everybody gets the same piece of code. Right. So they can execute that contract in a consistent manner so we have data portability. 
We have a common understanding of what this contract means. And what does it boil down to? You get paid faster and you get paid more accurately. Yeah. And that's really the goal. And that's what we're trying to do both from the broadcast perspective because you know, God knows that they've been you know, beaten to death on how long it takes for you guys to get paid once you deliver your part of the contract, right? The whole reconciliation process takes an enormous amount of time and the whole true up process, it's a big burden. If we can eliminate that by implementing things like blockchain, commonality, data portability, consistency, it just makes everything work better. It's not, it's not a disintermediation play. Right. It's really a play to remove friction. Right. And there are certain players that need to, you know, everybody has to join in, but we have this issue of trust. It's an area that blockchain addresses. And so potentially this is a way we can solve some of these systemic problems that have been in right. the ad agencies. That's a really good point that you brought it up. It's not necessarily about disintermediation and that you're not trying to eliminate some of the players necessarily, right. but they may have to morph slightly. And sure. Adam, actually you had brought up a really interesting example about in, in, um, in healthcare, Adam actually is a, is a blockchain engineer and um, he uh, worked with a company called Gem Healthcare. He was a senior technical advisor that actually built out the, the infrastructure of how um, Gem is handling the overall um, you know, blockchain to manage identity and sensitive uh, private information attached to a person's health records. Um, so you know, talk a little bit about how they've used um, the concept of blockchain to sort of morph their, their business model in general. Sure. So, I mean, it's all in this like early stage of blockchain companies. It's really difficult to find uh, use cases that that are that are doable today because it generally, as we've all been talking, requires a network for it to actually work properly. Um, so, it's always a goal to find like these like microcosms where we can work together uh, in, in there. And so, at, at, when I was working with the CEO at Gem, you know, we were like kind of hunting for things in healthcare and a couple other verticals, and we um, you know, focused upon a, co a commercial opportunity where uh, there was a, you know, a large credit card company had bought a large uh, healthcare payments company on the, on the enterprise side. And today that, that enterprise healthcare company, when they're clearing uh, uh, payments like, like for, from, a, from doctor's offices that are on and off network and, and from an insurance point of view, uh, the, the, uh, there's a lot of people like literally on the phones and on computers, like thousands of them that are, that are looking up in multiple databases to see if this, if, this, uh, if this charge should be $10 or $40 depending on the copay or if they should pay the whole thing. Um, and then you know, that's when you get those letters in the mail that say, hey, you need to pay another $40 or you don't and all this, all this type of stuff. Um, so while we can make that one particular thing more efficient, it actually was the goal of this credit card company is, hey, if we make this more efficient, we can actually run every transaction on our, on our own ACH network and generate a lot more revenue that way than have it go across like 20 or 30 or the, a different provider's ACH network. Um, so you know, we focused on our proof of concept there and built that out and I believe it's in production now. I left there to do this and, um, and uh, but it was, that, that was one of the moments when I kind of, re when I realized that, you know, like that there's an opportunity to, to shift, you know, the balance of power in a way of back to the actual providers. So in the case of ad tech, you know, you have the advertisers and the publishers, you know, you have the, the money and the distribution, um, you know, that's in a lot of ways, that's, you know, like, like the, uh, the power has shifted to, to those middle companies in a lot of ways. And, you know, is there a way to, to shift that, you know, back there so we can generate, you know, more, more transactions happening rather than uh, scraping on, you know, on, on the edges that are, that are already there. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so Vic, let's talk a little bit about, you know, because we're talking about the disintermediation of, of trust and verification and measurement, and obviously that's an important piece for Nielsen. And, um, you know, hypothetical scenario, for blockchain to work, pretty much every big player has to be involved. Everybody has to get on board. They all have to say, we're going to do this together to make a more efficient supply chain. So, you know, obviously, Nielsen would be one of the largest players in this programmatic media buying scenario for, for television. So, um, you know, what in the future might, it, uh, you know, what role might Nielsen play in the blockchain, for instance? It's a great question. Put me under the spot. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think there are 
there are layers to that question, right? Which is one is um, great. I mean, every conversation, every event is about transparency, and and uh, and clearly, I think uh, there is a degree of complication in industry, and 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 the fact that so many entities are involved because they're adding value at some point. Nobody's going to pay money for an additional layer if they were not serving a purpose, right? So I think the idea really comes back to, in my head, especially for programmatic, is this, the concept of the ID management. Uh, that's why I've mentioned those three pieces. Uh, the transaction side, the financial side of getting paid on time, of knowing, yep, the auditing worked, is great, right? I mean, you can talk about transparency and then spend hundreds of millions of dollars on media audits. That just doesn't add up. Um, so back to your question, I think identity uh, management in itself in the way um, uh, digital and TV advertising is, is evolving is a constant challenge. You have newer operating systems, you have newer technologies, uh, and measurement in that sense almost always ends up playing catch up because you need a consensus, you need all your partners to agree with. Um, uh, so, it's a, so it's a tough job, but to be really honest, I think in the short term, if you really bring this down to brass tacks and what's happening in the next three years, if we continue to evolve, uh, with the technology we are speaking of, is I see I see uh, you know for lack of a better phrase, advertiser data lakes, right? If I'm an advertiser, I spend you know we have 20 years of relationship, we spend so many so much money across screens on advertising. Shouldn't that all sit as a central pool which I can dip into to make decisions and 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 launch ads? And as part of that, you still have partners, vendors doing the things they do to verify, to audit, to, to measure. Uh, but is there a central pool of intelligence that one could lean on to, to make this happen constantly? And I think this that can only serve as good news for uh, the actual advertising. I mean, the publisher's job is done if they've, in the agreed on terms, served an ad to a person in the right context at the right time. Beyond that, it's the consumer. So, so long story short, I think it'll take a lot of participation but I see uh, specific partnerships, especially long-standing publisher advertiser relationships, where there's a ton of data to work with uh, to evolve using this concept, uh, and then also invite all the partners that we work with, whether it's on the measurement side, whether it's all the chains they're using to programmatically execute uh, the ad impression. Uh, but I see it happening in pockets rather than an on mass rollout of, hey, blockchain is here, let's put this SDK in all our apps and everything's gonna be great. Right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, okay, so last thing I really wanna talk about is that there's, you know, everyone knows that ad tech right now is looking is at a duopoly, which is essentially Facebook and Google. I think eMarketer said that 59% that of the total ad dollars were split amongst Facebook and Google. So that's a big deal and also Facebook just announced that they're moving into the OTT media buying space. And they obviously have like unparalleled targeting reach. And so they're able to essentially use their audience network to target OTT television ads. And so what happens there is if they're going to be um, you know, selling uh, advertising and working with publishers, I mean, what eventually could happen is that 30% of their margins, a publisher's margins, could go to Facebook. Um, over time, and that's if it's if it scales, which of course Facebook is amazing at scale. It it, it could be um, it could be a real problem. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> it could be a real problem. So if and we all know too that Facebook is not known for their um, transparency. It's not what they're synonymous with in general. So how could you know, and Adam, I'll ask you this question. So how could blockchain, essentially, and the transparency that comes with blockchain help certain publishers to keep their market share, keep their margins, and not have to rely on Facebook, for instance, to be essentially their representative? Right. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a few ways, and it's uh, almost like in a, in the way we're looking at it, it's an extension of what's, what people are using up private marketplaces in one, in one case for where can we you know, have this ether I spoke about before um, kind of uh, aggregate the, the data in a safe way of the publishers outside of basically, uh, you know, that, that basically want to keep their, their direct sales teams. Um, can, we, can we aggregate and, and share data between each other in, in safe ways to start to build up the, the targeting capabilities 
that a uh, that a you know that a Facebook or, or a Google might might have in the future is one way to do it. Um, you know, they're essentially like you know like a you know an, an OTT network that 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 Jim works with. You know, only has so much data, but that same person somewhere else has a ton of data as well. And mm -hmm. and yes, uh, you know, it's like a, a crux or, or a, a load of me might have a lot of that data as well. But there's just the way those relationships were all generated, the way the the way that everything is shared there on a deal by deal basis in a programmatic environment, getting access to that to those to the to the deeper targeting segments there. Um, it's it just not it's not really an option unless it's done from a manual perspective. Um, at least what what we've what we've been seeing. Uh, so that's one of the, the POCs that we're working with at, at Tegna. Um, but in general, it's a way of kind of can we, you know, create our own open, transparent version of what a Facebook would have that's, um, but it's not, you know, open in this new, secure uh, ma manner. Right. So essentially making transparency, you know, the antithesis to what Facebook is doing, you can essentially deliver reports that are, uh, you know, Facebook is just not able to report on because they they don't open up their wall gardens. Um, we only have a couple minutes, so I just wanted to see. Yeah. I just want to add. I mean, I oh, just sure. want to add to that. I mean, I mean, com coming from that side. I mean, again, as I've said, you know, we listen to our customers, and our customers are asking for transparency, and that's the the advertisers and the agencies. And so, um, we're here today, I think, talking about um, answering what our advertisers are asking for. So. Yes, I think it's going to be ultimately very helpful to us as publishers and all the publishing partners that we work with to maintain, protect market share and profitability, but to a, a point that Stacy made earlier around the ecosystem around it, the ad tech companies that are enabling this, um, and I sort of speak about the number of ad companies, that tech companies that you need to deliver an ad, it's actually by adopting blockchain um, across the board actually is a, a way of protecting those companies as well because um, you know, it's in our best interest right now without a blockchain system for there to be fewer partners, to be honest, because it's easier for us to integrate with fewer partners and frankly at the end of the month or at the end of the campaign, we have lots of fewer reconciliations that we have to do because we have to go across all these different systems. If we had um, really sort of a trusted source, um, certainly it would go much faster at the end of the month, people would get paid faster, reporting would go out faster. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, the adoption of these types of technologies um, are a really critical way, not just for the publishers, but for the ad tech companies as well. That's great. Thanks, so. that, thanks Jim. Um, this has been really fun. Thank you guys so much for, for talking.